May 2011, the costliest tornado struck Joplin, Missouri, just after the high school graduation on Sunday, May 22nd. The tornado touched down in a mile-wide swath that destroyed that school and killed 158 people. The Joplin tornado was a Category 5 storm and became one of the early events to appear on social media. It initiated one of the first opportunities to recruit volunteers for disaster response. Nonprofits were slow to embrace the new media tools and learn from individuals who posted their stories and encouraged others to get involved. We are a disaster response team. We've been coming to Joplin since the tornado hit. Why do we do it? It's because God told us to do it. I'm doing, uh, been doing mission work here in Joplin for, uh, this is my fourth trip, and uh, it's uh, one of my uh, passions to uh, help others, because uh, I've been blessed with, uh, uh, was able to retire early in my life, and so I need to, I was giving back uh, some of my time back to uh, the community. Most of us um, that come down on these trips are retired, we still, uh, have our health and feel that now's the time to give back for all the blessings we've had in our life. Make a donation. Most of this is all donated stuff. Oh, okay. Folks, mm -hmm. get our church or surround the community. I've been blessed richly all my life, so I took it as an opportunity to give back something to someone that needed help. It was our first trip that we were, when we came down here, we saw the massive destruction. And now we've come back a little over a year later, and it's amazing to see the recovery effort. There's a lot to be done here in Joplin yet, and uh, it, uh, the progress is coming along, but it's slow, and there's always room for more and more work to be done. There's 365 days a year. If someone can just come for a day or a week or whatever it is and put a little time in, it will help out immensely. The good news is that Joplin is setting the example for the rest of us out here to show what really the American way of life should be, neighbors helping neighbors. Despite the weather conditions, who've been coming out just trying to lend a hand to find any way that they can reach out into the community and just uh, provide whatever help they can to make things a little bit better. We've had people come from all over the central part of the United States, the upper Midwest. We have equipment that's come from as far away as Iowa and southern Minnesota. And uh, today, on Saturday, uh, this is the largest volunteer turnout that we've had. We've had uh, at least 2,000 people come through our system already, and we expect many more. Important uh, that individuals call 211 and talk to someone before they come to get additional information or to go to 211missouri.org Missouri. uh, website that can provide updated information uh, about um, our current status here. And also, um, I just want to say this is going to be an ongoing effort. We're going to need people for weeks and months uh, as we transition from this emergency response phase into the recovery phase. There are going to be opportunities for everyone of some type.
The rebuilding continues after the devastation of the tornado that flattened much of Joplin, Missouri. While Travel Television visited the area, members of the University of Missouri baseball team came to help out homeowners. Mizzou Athletics helped build homes as part of the Governor's Joplin Challenge. What the Governor's Challenge is, is the, the Governor of the State of Missouri issued a challenge to seven uh, sports programs in the state, so University of Missouri Athletic Department, St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Cardinals, Change up, got him looking. St. Louis Rams, Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Royals, so the Royals get the sweep. NASCAR. And we're here today to help finish up, up the homes that all the Mizzou students started. You know, we've had, you know, all the other sports, basketball down here. So baseball wanted to come uh, pay their dues with some other, with a couple softball girls and some gymnasts. And we just wanted to help out and, you know, finish up some of these homes. Look around, you can see there was so much, but now it's barely like anything and just to see like people drawn together and working as a team and rebuilding a community they need help and we want to help help them right back to me one of the biggest things is just the total lack of trees there are no trees it's pretty hard to hear about and i'm just glad that i can come down here and you know help i used to be a city letter carrier and I worked here in Joplin and I know this area I used to deliver mail half of my route was destroyed in the tornado and it was hard to figure out what street am I on because I look around my first delivery I'm like where am I where's 2402 Minnesota the house isn't there there's no street there's nothing recognizable as a landmark so that was like like you were you didn't even know where you were for a while that, that was difficult but that's all that is, has improved considerably Get it done, we're moving in. If you're volunteering in Joplin and you're at somebody's home or somebody's business volunteering, you may never see those people again, but those people will never, ever forget your face, ever. It's an amazing experience. It's, it's a special connection. Being able to go to play baseball at a great school is one of my dreams. You know, not every kid gets their dream. And to be able to give back to the community that I lived in for, you know, 18 years really means a lot. And to go back to Mizzou and, you know, all the friends I've already made and tell them, you know, just get out here, make an impact on something, change the world. I go to sleep at night. I wake up in the morning giving God thanks and praying for the health and safety of all the volunteers in Joplin. Without the volunteers from Joplin, St. Louis, nationwide and worldwide, it wouldn't be possible. It's wonderful. It really makes you feel good to do something for someone else. It just gives you a great feeling knowing that you're helping out somebody that has been through something pretty traumatic and, and uh, you know, it's a pretty cool deal. I'm going to start crying again. It's um, When we move into our house and we sit down for dinner, these are the people that help build our home that we'll never see them again. And there's just not enough thank yous for that. We're super grateful. They're amazing people. We want to be a part of the long-term commitment uh, to Joplin and not just in the next few days. So we came down about 14, 15 days later uh, on a Goodwill trip, handed out underwear and socks and assisted with food and all of that. And at that point, everybody in the United States had zeroed in on Joplin, so we were just a small part of it. But the Cardinals came together with the Royals for two teams in one goal. And then over the course of these last uh, 16 months, this Missouri Governor's Challenge, we've uh, joined up with the Chiefs and the Cardinals and uh, the Rams and the Blues, et cetera, to be a part of it. So well, competition uh, can be a great thing just to get people to go to the next level, contribute a little more, and you know, people always say, well, I'm given enough already. Well, how much is enough? So well, most of us are so blessed that uh, you know, we feel obligated to help when others are in need. that, you know, 
the teams in, in this state can come and help and you know and all the volunteers it's amazing that there's so many volunteers out here just to receive something like this after something like that it's just it's i'm very grateful i'm blessed It's almost like a fire that started um, around the, around Joplin. People are chipping in and doing what they can and help each other out. And I think we have a good catalyst going right here with this. Well, I'm down here with the Royals uh, organization. And uh, we came down here to lend a helping hand to the, the people that suffered a devastating loss here in Joplin. And we just wanted to be a part of uh, just helping out another a fellow American. It feels great because a lot of these families are Royals fans and they uh, come out and support us. So it was our pleasure to come out and uh, talk to the families and maybe lift their spirits up a little bit. It's been really cool. It's been, it's been really a blessing to be able to come down here. It's just, it's, I mean, I'm taking more from it. I've been here for 20 minutes. I've taken more from it than I'm sure anybody's taken from me. So it's been pretty awesome. This is what we're doing. He gave a little background on what happened last year. Uh, to told him about the disaster. Told him what the team did last year. And, uh, you know, we said whoever wants, wants in can be in. And that was really good. I see it. Uh, I kind of kind of heard about, you know, how devastating it was in the community. So it really, really wasn't a question for me whether I come or not. Uh, it was kind of an automatic yes or not. I'm kept out what I can to care about. It's an incredible feeling just to be able to give back, you know, especially to uh, fans and people in the community. So what made you really want to come down here even and kind of put your vacation plans on hold for a little while? Uh, I mean, I, I remember when I heard about uh, Joplin last year and the devastation and so forth, and there wasn't really a whole lot that, uh, you know, we could do based on the schedule we had. Um, but, you know, I had an opportunity to come back this year and help out. Uh, it was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to try to give back and help out these people in need. got a lot more. about coming to Joplin and I knew there was da disaster and devastation and I seen God's people hurting and I wanted to somehow come and help heal. But the thing that happens mostly is you find out that instead of you coming out and missioning to someone else, um, okay. the circumstances tend to mission to you. I see it. It's really kind of opened my eyes to what other people go through because when you hear it on the news, you're like, yeah, that's really terrible, but you don't really feel how bad it is until you actually see like what happened and how the people were affected. And when you actually hear their stories and see their emotions like in their face when they're telling you the story. You learn things that you didn't know before, like I've been uh, taping and floating and how to how to make the the cement we put on the wall be smooth. Hey, Hansel, where'd you go, Mark? I it right here on here. The, now, I thought I knew how to do this before I came out here. <laughs> and what I found out is, how, A, how much I didn't know, and B, how much I could learn. So I can take this now back, and I have this basement that I've been trying to finish for the last nine months. 
<laughs> and so now I know that I can do this probably in a weekend where before it probably would have taken me another nine months to finish it. Um, the people here have been incredibly brave and incredibly generous and that's not what you expect to find in a place filled with devastation and loss. Um, you expect to find people upset and bitter and you, you're there to comfort them. Instead, they comfort you. They encourage you. They lift you up. They make you want to work harder than you uh, had originally intended. And it makes you feel very special and important to know that you have come, you know, across the country. If you want a great experience to, that helps you and fulfills a need for the, the help that you want to give people, come to Joplin because it's the, it's the place to be right now for help. You all come down. Ask your Lord to comfort this area. They've been through so much. Let us be an inspiration to those who have lost things. Guide us, my God. Be a light. Stay with us for a long time to come. Two weeks after Hurricane Katrina, this city was a ghost town. And to drive through your city and to be able to hear a pin drop and to look at, you know, every mom and pop business or restaurant that you ever went to, to see all of that boarded up or wiped out or, and no one in town, it was, it was surreal. It was, it was almost like a Twilight Zone episode. Three days after Hurricane Katrina, I uh, went to my house, I had to go by a boat, and it, you know, we had about nine feet of water in my neighborhood, and this is my house. I know, and I, I wanna explain to those people that the helplessness that they might be feeling now, there is hope. There are people that care out there, and there are people that are gonna help. I mean, I, ha I had figured it'd be 10 years before this city would be back up on its feet. When the guys from New York came down, initially they were here just for, to help us with firefighting duties. But as, as time went on, those guys started going out to other firemen's houses and um, helping guys with whatever they needed. So when those guys showed up, it was like, like I said, it was a huge weight lifted off our shoulders. Hey, there's some help here. There's some people outside of this city that care about us and come down here and help us get going again. Uh, we want to go up there and help these guys in any kind of way we can. We don't care if we're down in the basements, shoveling the sand out of the basements. We don't care what we have to do. <laughs> we do. We all <laughs> We're headed up to New York City to help our brother firefighters with a little relief after Hurricane Sandy. I'm excited. I'm ready to get there and get busy. New York firefighters came down when we were in desperate need. It's it's a brotherhood and sisterhood that you know. It, you can only describe by being a part of it. I just want to let you know, though, uh, I'm, I know how you feel, man. Absolutely, and bud. 
that there's hope and there's, yeah, there's a light at the, the kids, end of the yeah, tunnel. Yeah, the kids and the uh, wife were the biggest thing. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I know that feeling. It's, uh, you know, it's a little bit easier for us. Right. Like as I was explaining to the guys, you work as hard as you can during the day, you go home, you go to sleep, you wake up the next day, you do it again. We met a bunch of people today that uh, needed help. We saw a bunch of guys that helped us down in uh, New Orleans. And I think we're pretty successful in uplifting our spirits. breezy point where all the houses burned down and uh, they actually had one American flag that said uh, <clears throat> bigger, better, stronger, which meant a lot to me because uh, losing everything in Katrina, that's what I wanted to do is build something better, bigger, and stronger. My name is uh, Billy Shanks, captain of the New Orleans Fire Department. Um, you know, we're up here to help people out, and uh, I know you uh, need some help. And uh, this is just a little, uh, a little gift from the, the people of New Orleans. I don't know what it is. It's uh, some some cash and a gift card. Um, people know what you're going through. All the way. Hey. All three of us right here lost our house, so we know. All three of us. Except it. Somebody's going to do it. Every day it's right. going to get better. Every day it's going to get better. I was actually looking at, at this woman as, as if she could have been my grandma and, uh, and that I was helping somebody's mom, somebody's grandma. I'm here to help them. I want to make them feel better. And I'm hoping that through my experiences and having been there twice, that I can convey some of this to these people and show them that there is hope. I have a guy here that lost two homes. He lost one for Katrina and he lost one two months ago in Hurricane Isaac. And he's gonna rebuild. She's exactly what we were talking about the type of person that we wanted to help. I watched my brothers and sisters suffer with Hurricane Katrina. I saw them lose everything. And I knew it's, there's more than, than what we do as, as uh, firemen. And so, yeah, I'm gonna remember all of these people because my mission was to help these people. You know, I bet she's not gonna forget us. So, mission accomplished.